Hello again Blenderheads and welcome to part 2 of the Everything You Need to Know About Retopology series. Now this is a crash course in getting started with retopology in Blender, so we won't be going over absolutely everything, just the stuff that you need to know. So in part 1 we covered the absolute basics using only Blender's built-in tools and we also talked about some of the issues that you might run into while retopologizing. So if you're just starting out with retopology, I'd strongly recommend going back and watching that first video as it's going to give you a solid understanding of retopology in Blender without all the bells and whistles that could be confusing if you're just a beginner. On the other hand, if you're specifically here because you want to speed up your retopology game by using the Speed Retopo add-on, then let's jump in. The first thing that you're going to want to do is download the Speed Retopo add-on. Now you can get that from either the Gumroad or the Blender Market sites. Both links will be in the description. Downloading from Gumroad means that you can get it for free, so that's possibly the best place to get it. That said, this add-on is really, really good and it's probably worth at least $20 or so. So if you're in a position to do so, I'd strongly recommend supporting the developer and paying the $1 where you can get it off Blender Market. That'd be really nice of you. So once you've downloaded the add-on from whichever site, you'll want to install it. And the installation is the same as most of the add-ons in Blender. Simply go to Edit, Preferences, go to the Add-ons tab, which I've already got selected here, and then go and click on Install. Navigate to wherever you've downloaded your folder. Now in my case, I have a Blender scripts folder specifically for all of my scripts and add-ons. Do a quick search for Speed Retopo and just double click on the Python file. And that will bring up the add-on here. Click on it to initiate it. And then we've got all of our additional options down here. Now by default, Speed Retopo uses this tools panel over here. Let's just bring that back up. Which I actually think might be a little bit of an oversight in the coding or maybe something's happened since uh, Blender's been updated. But just for ease of use, I always like to change this to Tool so that it matches all of my other add-ons and it'll now appear under this menu under Speed Retopo. Now don't worry too much about these other settings. Pretty much all of these can be tweaked within the add-on itself. The only thing that I might tweak just for my personal preferences is here where we've got starting Retopo from Vertex. I like to use the B surface. Don't worry, we'll go over all of these so you'll know which one that you want to personally work with. But I'm going to choose B surface and then close this out. So to start with, I'm just going to go and toggle my overlays back on and you can see just how bad our retopology is here. You can see here under re Speed Retopo, it's got Select an Object. So let's select the object that we're planning on retopologizing, which is the Spyro body here. And you can see now we get all of these options. In fact, I'm just going to minimize some of these so it's a little bit easier. Now, as we said before, this is the uh, Start Retopo with options. Like I say, I really like to use the B surfaces to get started with, but let's go over the Vertex and Poly build just so you know what they do and what the differences are. Now, when I first got this add-on, I found this part a little bit confusing. I thought that maybe you got different options depending on which one you selected. This is purely how you start your retopo. This just allows you to put down your first couple of polygons. After that, all of these other options become the same. So this doesn't really matter too much which one you go with. So let's start with probably the simplest of them. Let's start with Vertex. Now all of these other options, again, don't worry about them too much. We'll, we'll come back and go over most of these, but this is just what's going to be added when we click this Start Retopo button. So it's going to add a mirror modifier, it's going to add a shrink wrap modifier, and these are just some visual displays, all of which can be tweaked as we go. So let's just start by zooming in a little bit here, because when you click this, it is going to kind of lock down your camera to start with. So let's just start kind of where we want to start. So let's click Start Retopo. And you can see now I've got this little cursor here, which suggests that I can now place a vertex. And you can see that it's snapping to my model quite nicely. So let's start by just placing one somewhere around about here. And in terms of starting, that's, that's kind of it. From here, we just go back to using all of our regular tools. So if I zoom in a little bit here and just hit E to extrude, and I'm just noticing that I don't have my screencasts on. So let's make sure that that's on so you can all see what I'm doing. Go back to tools here. There we go, that's better. So now when I hit E, you can see that I can start extruding some of these points and I can use F to join all of those. Uh, now at the moment, this doesn't have a face. This is just vertices and edges. So I can tap A to select all and hit F and that has technically added a face there, but you can't quite see it. This is because of these display options here and this will depend on your own workflow. Personally, I like to be able to see my faces. So I'm gonna tap hidden wireframe and now you can see that, look at that, we do in fact have a face there, we just couldn't see it properly. We'll come back to some of these in a little bit. So now I can see things a little bit better 
and I can just use some of my extrude tools and just start kind of moving things around. And at this point, now that we've created this, we're basically back to all of our regular tools in terms of retopology. So that's not too bad, that's our vertex tool. I've just gone back into object mode. You can see here it creates a new mesh. This is our retopology mesh. Any time that you want to get back to your tools, you just have to click on that mesh and go into edit mode and you can see that all of these come back up. So you can kind of go off and if you want to do some modeling over here or whatever, you can anytime come back to this, go back into edit mode and continue with your retopology. But let's delete this. We can see we've once again got this select an object. So this time let's try using the poly build. So as we saw before, I really didn't like the use hidden wire. So I'm going to disable that one so that it won't create that uh, visual setting when we first start our retopology. So let's start again. And you can see now that we're working with our poly build tool. So this is going to be very, very similar to our, uh, our first video. If I now go in here and to create a vertex, I need to hold down control and just click. Now, poly build as a starting point is not great with this add-on because although that looks all right, if we kind of zoom around here, you can see that this vertex is actually just kind of hanging in space. And that's because our poly build doesn't really obey our snapping until we've started to create a few things. Now it's not too difficult to fix. We can just kind of go back to our front view here, click and drag on that. And you can see that now it's snapping correctly. And from there, we can start adding our points again and we can get things set up. And again, we've got all of our regular tools. Uh, so I can either, whoops, I can either go back to my selection tool here and I can select both of those and hit F to create the edge, or I can keep using the poly build and I can use the auto merge function to snap those. When you enable speed retop, oh, it automatically turns on your auto merge. So that just saves you a little bit of extra time. And it does also have options down here, depending on how far you want your auto merge to automatically merge. Once again, this hasn't created our face. This is just edges and, uh, and vertices. So I can hold shift alt and select all of those, or I should be able to just tap A and select all of them. Again, hit F. And you can see that now we get that face because we didn't have hidden wire on. And from here, it's once again, we're now just into our retopology stuff. So I can start clicking and dragging on our edges. Once again, if you want some more detail on how to use the poly build tool, our first lesson covers that in some pretty good detail. So now that we've got this, I can just very quickly start building stuff out. And we're basically back to where we started. So once again, I'm going to go into object mode. I'm going to delete our retopology mesh here. And this time, let's show B surface because I think this is where the speed retopo tool, the, the add-on gets really powerful. So once again, I'll make sure that hidden wire is disabled and I will go start retopo. Now this time, yes, we still get all of our add-on, our um, modifiers and everything, but if I click, kind of nothing happens. Nothing seems to work. I can hold down control and click and well, in that fact, this case, it selects our body, which if anything is even more annoying. So now let's just go back to object mode, reselect that, go back into edit mode. So how do we use this B surface stuff? Also worth mentioning that the B surface is kind of its own add-on. You can see here that this is enabled. Now I believe that when you enable speed retopo, it turns this on automatically. If for some reason it starts throwing up errors and suggests that something is missing, just double check that your B surface add-on is in fact turned on. But like I say, it should enable it by default. So back to our retopology, how do we go about creating stuff? We need to know some of our B surface shortcuts. And basically in our case, that is going to be the D key. So if you hold down D, now, goodness me, that's kind of going bananas down there. If you hold down D and then click and drag, you can see that I can now start drawing little lines. And this is where this starts to get really powerful. So if I now come down here and draw another line, I can go up here and click on the add B surface. And you can see that it just automatically goes and adds this string of polygons, which is really, really fast. Down here, we've got our options, so we can decide how many cross edges that we want. I think I'm gonna go with four. This is a little bit slow, but once you've got it set up, it's not too bad. And you can also decide how many edges you want going across. So I'm gonna go with four and two, just to kind of get us started. So what's really nice is that now I can come down here and once again hold down D and draw another line. And if I hold down Shift and Alt and select this uh, line of vertices or edges around here, I can go Add B Surface and it automatically goes and adds all of these 
again, in fact, I'm just going to go and reduce our follow there just so I've got a little bit more control over this. I just wanna be able to draw one line and get one line of polygons just so I've got a little bit more control. So that's really good, that's really fast. We can just kind of draw a line, hold down D, and go and add B surface, and we can very quickly get these down. But what's even cooler is you don't just have to do one line at a time. So if I come down here now and draw several lines, let's see how far down we can get this, and now go up and uh, shift alt select those edges and go add B surface, you can see that it adds all of those all in one go. So you can see just how fast this is going to get. So let's just go and see how much of his chest we can get done here. Let's just draw a few more lines. You can see I'm doing this really rough and really quick. Select all of those. Now, you do also have the option of bringing up this menu here. So you've got either this panel over here or you can shift right click and you get all of these options as well. So you technically don't need to have this panel here, which once you get used to this add-on will allow you to work even faster. Now the one downside that I do kind of have with this add-on is shift right click is usually reserved for moving your 3D cursor around. So if I just go under view here, just rotate us around a little bit, you can see I've got my 3D cursor there and I can kind of shift it around. Uh, usually holding down shift and right clicking would move that around. Now broadly speaking, I found that when I'm doing my retopology, I don't tend to use the 3D cursor. I use it quite a bit for modeling and maybe animation, but I don't think I've ever run into any problems where I've been like, oh, I really want to use my 3D cursor, but this menu keeps popping up, that's annoying. Generally speaking, when I'm doing my retopology, I turn on speed retopo in the add-ons, and then when I'm moving on to animation, or maybe I want to go back to modeling something, I just disable it. You also have the option of going into your, um, into your key mapping, into your key binding, and finding the, um, the shift right click, and you, you can go in and change these keyboard shortcuts. So you can either set up your 3D cursor to work with something different, or you can set up the speed retopo add-on to work with something different if you wanted to be able to have it enabled all the time. Personally, I just enable it and disable it as I need it. So let's go back to our retopology here, go back into edit mode, go back under tools so that we can see all of these again, and you can see that it's kept our selection, which is nice. So if I now go shift right click and go add B surface, you can see that it adds it right from there. Now, just to prove a point here, you don't have to do this, you know, an entire edge all in one go. There's no reason that I couldn't come up here and let's just say select these two edges. In fact, let's just go down a little bit further. And now I can use the D to draw in these lines, reselect those and go add B surface. And you can see that it just extrudes from those. I've still got my soft selection turned on here. Just move these around as I see fit. So you can just move, uh, you can just extrude these couple of edges rather than having to do an entire, an entire line in one go. Now, just a couple of viewport things, because this is kind of bugging me a little bit. I don't like these default settings. Maybe you do feel free to keep using them. I don't like this uh, where I can see through my model and I can see my retopology on the other side. I find that to just be a bit visually confusing. So you can turn off back face culling. And you can see that gets rid of most of it. I can still see my wireframe though. So I can go and click in front. And that then means that that's all pushed behind. Um, nothing's, uh, sorry, this is kind of obscuring it. Uh, but I do kind of like this sort of uh, transparent look we've got. So as much as I'm not a huge fan of these uh, wireframes kind of sitting back over there, I think I'd rather put up with that and have this uh, this nice kind of um, transparent wireframe sitting there. I find it I find it really useful to be able to see all these kind of little lumps and bumps so that I can match my uh, my retopology up to say these little lines in his chest. Whereas in if I have that set there, I I can no longer see what I'm doing. So these settings here are kind of my personal preference, but feel free to just sort of play around with them and figure out what works best for you because that's going to differ from person to person. Now, extruding these faces all the way down here has actually worked really, really well for me. Oftentimes, this won't work quite as perfectly. So I'm actually going to just kind of come in here and delete a few of these faces and show you some of the ways that it can go wrong. Let's just kind of match this up a little bit better. So let's go back to our uh, drawing tool here. And I'm going to just sort of offset this a little bit, make sure that it's not quite in the center. Remember that you've got the mirror modifier on, so 
Generally speaking, you'll want to try to draw it directly from the middle. That's why it's worked really well this time. But let's just say that you kind of offset this a little bit and just, you know, maybe didn't do a perfect job. So let's go in and add our B surface. And you can see now I've got this big gap where our retopology hasn't worked properly. Now I can just come in and kind of do this manually and uh, just sort of re-zip this section up. But there is a built-in tool for that. So let's go Shift-Alt, select everything down the middle line and go to our right click. And if you go to Align to X, you can just see that it takes every single vertice here that you've got selected and snaps it directly to the center. So again, this is just one of those really fast tools. And you'll probably find yourself using it fairly frequently. Now you can probably also see here that I've, I've kind of got this, these polygons here are considerably bigger than say these ones all the way over here. That's just, it's not perfectly clean. So again, there's no reason you can't just sort of come in and do this manually, but again, why not use some of the built-in tools? So let's select this entire edge along here. Let's bring up our menu again and let's just go space. And you can see that now kind of tries to space all of our vertices with the, about the same gap in between all of them. So if I just kind of come through here, I can kind of space these out just a little bit nicer. Now, this tool, the this spacing tool, seems to work particularly well when you're just working with a, uh, an, a one single edge going across. So if, for example, let's come up here and maybe select you know, a bunch of these edges, so maybe deselect those. And if we try to do this now, you can see that it doesn't do a particularly good job. So I don't think it's really designed for working that way. Instead, if you want to try to get a, you know, a big uh, a big string of vertices like this, you can go and use the relax tool. Now that won't have shifted too much because there's not too much to relax here, but you can probably see that that just sort of shifts everything ever so slightly and just kind of smooths it all out a little bit. Now you do have to be a little careful using the relax tool. In fact, I can see that it's kind of done it there. So this is gonna smooth everything. Watch, watch this particular line here. At the moment, I just hide that for a second. It's lined up very nicely on this ridge in his chest piece. But if I now come in here and go relax, you can see that it pops it out somewhat. And now we'd have to go back and manually kind of readjust this. So you do have to be a little bit careful with, with using some of these automatic spacing and relaxing tools. Most of the time they work pretty well. Just be aware that sometimes they can, you know, sort of explode a little bit. You possibly also noticed then when I tried to move this vertice, it's snapped it to the center. That's just because of the size of my particular object and it's interacting with this mirror modifier over here. Our merge distance is just set a little bit too high. So if I just come and set this to 0.01 instead, and now I can move that without it doing that horrible snapping problem. Now, speaking of kind of some weird snapping problems, if you've been back and watched the first video, you'll have noticed that there are times where our shrink wrap modifier kind of behaves a little bit strangely and our uh, edges here just kind of stop snapping in the way that we'd sort of expect them to. And the only way to fix that is to just go in, apply the shrink wrap modifier and recreate it. And that's a little bit of a tedious process. Fortunately, Speed Retopo has a really nice quick way of doing that. So if I just bring up my right click menu again, or shift right click, you can see here we've got, this is the section for our modifiers and you can see that I can uh, enable and disable our mirror modifier, I can do the same thing with our shrink wrap. And there's a few different options like applying our mirror modifier. In our case, we kind of don't want to do that. And as you can see, when I undo that, it doesn't actually recreate our mirror modifier, which is a little bit annoying, but that's okay. We also have an add mirror button up here to quickly bring it back. So in terms of the uh, shrink wrap modifier, we've got this little arrow here. This is our uh, reset button, basically. So this will automatically apply our shrink wrap and then create a new one on top of it. So if we just click that, you can see that everything just shifts ever so slightly. And that's because it's now reapplied everything and everything does shift ever so slightly when you do that. But this should now be applied a little bit better. Uh, and in our case, it actually seems to have done a really, really good job. Oftentimes it will apply the shrink wrap and just do not a perfect job. So oftentimes I will have to come in here and realign that to the X axis. But as I say, it's done a good job this time. Now again, what's really nice about using um, Speed Retopo and all the different uh, retopology creation methods is there's nothing that stops us from coming down here and continuing just to use our normal tools. So I can come and select these edges and I can just kind of extrude them out a little bit further if I want. I can go back to our poly build tool here and I can continue using that if I feel like it. 
tend to see that's behaving just a little bit strangely. There we go, that's a little bit better. I can also use Control R here if I want to add a few extra edge loops for whatever reason. Maybe I just want a little bit more geometry in there. And that all works really, really well. So let's just extrude some extra edges over here so I can show you some of these other tools. So one, two, three, four, one, two. Let's just make sure we've got the same number of edges here. And we do, so this should work nicely. Okay, so let's drag this across a little bit. What we want to do now is bridge these areas. So again, you've got access to all of your normal tools. You can just go bridge edge loop, which is fine. Or you've also got that option under your uh, shift right click menu, and we can bridge from there. You see this has done something a little bit weird here. It's kind of flipped these over. There's no reason you can't just come down here and go to your twist or tap the reverse and that fixes that. So if you've got two different areas on your retopology that you want to join, you can use the bridge tool. As well as that, we also have the grid fill option. So let's just go and add another edge in there so that we've got the same number of edges on both sides. And if I just go and uh, shift alt click to select that ring around there, Again, you can either go uh, Control F to bring up your faces menu, and you can go grid fill from there, or once again, this is built into the add-on with your shift right click, and you can tap bridge. Um, sorry, not bridge. We want to reselect those, and we want to go grid fill, and you can see that that now does it properly. And you can also see that this is, I mean, it's, it's filled it in nicely, but this is not necessarily clean topology. You can see that this kind of comes down there and then goes off a bit of a weird angle. So let's just select all of this area and go shift right click and let's go relax and you can see that in this case the uh, automatic method has done a pretty good job so that covers our bridge grid fill spacing relax we also have this g stretch tool here now i believe that the way that this is supposed to work is if i was to uh, let's grab our d brush again and let's just kind of make a bit of a zigzaggy line here and if i was to then select all of those edges if I was to use the G stretch thing here, it's, it's supposed to try and make this, uh, this string of edges follow our little squiggly line here. But you can see that when I do that, I mean, it does shift it uh, and it actually hasn't massively broken it for a change. But you can see that it, it doesn't, doesn't do a particularly good job. And that's because unfortunately the G stretch tool is not working in the uh, latest version of Blender. I'm not sure whether they're planning on, uh, on fixing that or whether this is now kind of a defunct feature. This may not be coming back. Incidentally, now that we've got this wiggly line here, um, how do we get rid of it? You can see that if I just kind of try to undo, it, it doesn't disappear. It goes back to whatever changes that we made in our topology. What you need to do is hold down D and instead of left clicking to draw, you just hold down right click and you can see that I now get this eraser tool and I can now come in and erase whatever we've got there. If for example, you were maybe trying to bring this string of polygons here down to the leg and you started drawing and you accidentally drew over the edge and then you tried to add a B surface, you can see that it does some weird things. It tries to reproject it onto the belly. If you've accidentally done that, you can just come in here, hold down D and just kind of erase that back a little bit and then add the B surface and it fixes it. So I think that takes care of all the various tools that are available in this add-on. The last thing or second last thing that I want to show you is just a little technique, which is uh, getting a, a loop of polygons to go around uh, a cylinder shape like this leg here. If I use the D tool here, you can see that there's, there's no way to kind of wrap this around the leg. You can see that it projects onto the leg and then goes off at a weird angle. And trying to add that just sort of does some weird stuff. Let's just undo that. The way that we fix this, let's just give ourselves a little string of polygons to work with. And instead, this time let's just grab our drawing tool again and let's just draw a few lines around our leg. And it broke on me. Hold on a second. Let's just erase that. Let's try that again. Hold down D. And 
and that should probably do. Okay, so let's select these now. And now that we've got these lines drawn around our leg, if we go and add a B surface, you can see that it now wraps all the way around. And of course we can come in here, bridge that last little bit, and then just wiggle them around as we see fit. Or we could come in here and try doing a relax. And we can also come in and add a few extra edge loops if we don't feel like we've quite got enough detail. And I might just try and relax that again a little bit. That's how you get polygons to go around objects. And we can do the same sort of thing up here to uh, get rings around, say, the eyes. Like we did with the leg, let's come in here and just draw a few lines. I like to try and just draw them a little bit further away from the actual eye socket, just so we don't get any weird snapping where the vertices try to snap inside the head. Let's just draw a few of these. Now, in this case, we want to create a new mesh up here, so don't select any edges down here. And if we just go right shift right click and go add B surface, we add a whole bunch of polygons. Now in this case, I think we've got too many on the cross, so let's just drop that down to one. So we're just dealing with a few less polygons. And you'll also notice that this now appears clear, whereas in this down here is purple. Now if I flip around here, you can see that it's purple on this side. So for some reason, and I'm not quite sure why it's doing it on my model, but it's decided that it wants to flip these normals. Now sometimes you can just kind of go select all, and go recalculate normals and it will fix it. In our case, it's not for some reason. And I admit I'm not 100% sure why, but it's a fairly easy fix. This is why having these viewport display options is really nice because you can actually just look at this and immediately tell, oh, something's wrong, what's wrong? Let's use the L key to just select that section. And we can go Alt N and under here we've got recalculate normals and a whole bunch of other normals options. Let's just flip that around. You can see now that that's kind of turned that pinky purpley color and is now working as expected. Let's just get this ring all the way around the eyes and just see whether any other problems occur with our normals. So again, holding down D, let's just draw a couple more lines in here select that edge and go and add the B surface. And you can see once again, it's kind of done this weirdness where it's flipping things. So again, use L to select, we can go recalculate normals. In this case, it still really feels like that should be the front. It's being a little bit uh, annoying. So let's go Alt N and flip them again. And then just to make this easy, let's just manually reconnect this last little bit. I'm just going to go back down here to our body for a little bit. I'm just going to go through and do a little bit of retopology work here, just so we've got a little bit more um, geometry to work with. And then I'm going to show you how you can test to see whether the retopology you've done is working.
So clearly the retopology here isn't finished yet, but it's finished enough that I can show you how to test it and make sure that it's working properly. And you should probably be doing regular tests as you go along rather than finishing everything only to find out you've done something wrong near the end. So now is probably a good time to run a quick little test while we've kind of got a good chunk of him done here. Now, Speed Retopo uses the subdivision modifier to, uh, to run its tests. So that is the subdivision surface here, which you're probably familiar with. However, if you're ultimately trying to bake either normal maps or displacement maps for uh, animation or rendering later, and you're looking to do your final exports, like if your retopology was finished here, you'd probably be want, to, want to be using the multi-resolution modifier. Now, I'm not going to go over how to do that in this particular tutorial. I'm planning another one that will do a kind of step-by-step -step guide on how to use the multi-res, how to extract normal and displacement maps. So I'm not going to cover that just now, but just keep in mind that if you're doing your final export, probably use the multi-res. But if we just go back into edit mode here, this using the subsurf option here that comes with speed retopo is perfectly fine just for testing purposes. So you can see we've either got the button there, or if we bring up our menu, we've got the add subsurface in here. So I'm going to click that. And you can see that it actually adds the subsurf in between our mirror and shrink wrap modifier, which is where we want it. So from here, you can either drop back into object mode, or you can just come here and click the little edit mode toggle here. And that'll show us our, our final result while we're still in edit mode. And you can see that at the moment, our final result kind of looks a little bit weird. Some of these detailed areas look uh, a little bit puffy, a little bit inflated. And that's due to our shrink wrap modifier. Its uh, offset is just set a little bit too high. So I'm just going to lower this. I'll hold down shift and click and drag so that I can move it only tiny little increments. increments. And as you can see, the closer we get that to the original surface, the better and better it starts to look. So I'm going to leave mine at 0 0.003 in this case. And I think that's going to be close enough. So at first glance, this is good. This seems to be working. Uh, we are not, we're not picking up quite as much detail as I would like. If I just go and hide our main mesh here, you can see I've kind of got these little uh, scratches and stuff built into his armor, and I'm not picking all of that up. I'd really like to get all of that detail in there, just to test and make sure that our geometry is, is high enough that we can actually pick up all of these tiny little details. So the way we do that is just go to our levels viewport, and we just want to crank this up slightly. Now keep in mind that the higher you put this, the more taxing it's going to be on your computer. Push it as high as you can, you know, without breaking your computer, basically. And you can see that once I hit level 4, we can start to pick up these details. And that's probably high enough. I will just push it to 5. And you can see that I get a little bit more detail out of that. But there's not a big difference between 4 and 5. We just kind of get a little bit more contrast in there. So I'll leave it at 5. Because again, this is just for uh, testing purposes. And you can see that this pretty much seems to be working. Uh, I'm, I'm just going to do a little bit of a scout over the model and see if I can't pick up any defects. And it seems to have worked pretty well. Even these uh, little swirly things on his kneecaps have turned out pretty good. And those are probably one of the hardest parts to get right with this process. Now one thing that you do want to do is just kind of go through the middle of your model, that center point on the x-axis, and just make sure that everything is lining up. And I can see a tiny little glitch in here if we zoom right in. Something strange is going on here. So let's just turn our subsurf off for a moment. Go back to toggle here. I'm just going to isolate this by hitting the slash key and zoom back in. And yes, you can indeed see that we've got some vertices here that have at some point in the process crossed over and I haven't noticed. So let's turn our subsurf back on. In fact, no, I will leave that disabled because that many polygons may slow things down too much. I'm just going to use the grab key and make sure that, that is snapped to the center again. And turn back our subsurf. Toggle our wireframe off. And now you can see that that has worked very nicely. Now, as I said in the last lesson, it can be tempting to try and... Uh, it, obviously, we're not finished with our retopology here. You want to go back in and keep working on it. It can be tempting to continue working with the subsurf modifier on because, hey, if I keep working with all of this selected, I get all of this extra detail as I work. And, and I mean, it can kind of work, but you possibly notice there, if I just undo... As I start to extrude it, I get this really weird glitchiness going on, particularly if I do that. 
So working with a subsurf modifier on gets really, really tricky and tedious and difficult, and you get all these little glitches that come through. So I would strongly recommend deleting your subsurf, either you can delete it here in your modifier stack, or you can use the add-on to delete it up here, and go back to your original low poly mesh and maybe just increase the offset a little bit more so it's easier to work. And now you can go back to working. And any time that you want to retest it, you can just go and add a subsurf again and crank that back up. Keeping in mind that you will probably still need to lower the offset. So that's how you test whether or not your topology is working. And that brings us to the end of this lesson. Now I'm planning one more video in this series. And in that lesson, we'll be covering the retopo flow add-on. Retopo Flow is even more powerful than Speed Retopo, with the downside that it is a paid add-on. Now, if you don't have a spare $86, Speed Retopo is a fantastic free add-on, but if you're looking to take your retopology to yet another level, maybe you do retopology a lot, or maybe you do it professionally and you're happy to sink that money in for a few extra nice features, tune in in the next lesson where I'll give you a crash course on Retopo Flow. Until then.